Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I wanted to feature an old, old compression driver. So this uh, was sent to me by a customer and it's the Pioneer PD200S. And so uh, this driver is almost 50 years old and it's a precursor to the renowned TAD brand. And um, yeah, so it's specced out that it produces a bandwidth from 500 to 13 kilohertz. Um, now it uses a the uh, 34 millimeter threaded mounting, typical of the vintage Western Electric drivers, which uses a 19 millimeter uh, throat. Now the driver is a 16 ohm driver. Um, now the customer uh, commissioned me to do a biradial horn for this, and so the unusual mounting required that I did an adapter. And so the horn actually allows the mounting of traditional or modern compression drivers. And so um, to secure the driver, it's cradled in these cradles. And then we have an auto former and an NL4 connector uh, on the side of it. So now um, if we look at the uh, horn flare, the adapter I kept consistent. I didn't do a conical adapter. I did a exponential adapter that keeps the flare geometry consistent with the rest of the horn. So you can see here the back of the horn. Um, it's quite a large driver. It's using the Alnico magnet and has, um, you know, the old old school uh, uh, flat head screws for securing the uh, wires. So now doing an impedance sweep, you can see here that it's. Um, I would say that the fundamental mechanical resonance is at 400 hertz, and then there's a large. Uh, peak in the response and then we do see some breakup occurring probably at around uh, 10 11 kilohertz there Looking at the frequency response um, We can see that there is a large peak at uh, 1.1 kilohertz which ties into what we're seeing here um, There's some sort of a resonance there at 1.1 kilohertz uh, It draw it has a flat response, but it does fall abruptly uh, 2.5 kilohertz and then the driver completely runs out of steam uh, pretty much where the first breakup mode occurs here um, it just falls off like a rock so extension out to only 11 kilohertz now burst decay um, burst decay is average compared to other compression drivers um, looking at the waterfall it does look pretty clean in the waterfall but we do see a uh, huge amount of stored energy there at the 1.1 kilohertz. Now, uh, I did harmonic distortion, and you can see um, at 90 dB at one meter, um, the second order is only at minus 45 dB, which uh, is quite high. Uh, normally, you'd want to see that uh, below around 55 dB. However, the higher orders, like the fourth order harmonic, is at minus 70 uh, dB, which is low. Uh, now, I did conduct intermodulation distortion, and I would say the result is average. So we're seeing about a min minus 50 uh, dB uh, across its bandwidth, and then it rises to about minus 42 dB at the 10 kilohertz. So um, adding a high-pass filter at 4 kilohertz, we see things improve a little bit, and uh, distortion improves um, to about minus 60 dB. So um, there you have it, just a quick little video that shows you um, what these older compression drivers are capable of. Um, so uh, the customer had sent me this driver and um, I um, offered some, you know, offered to, for him to go with a better, uh, more modern compression driver, but the customer, because of nostalgia, um, there was some sentimental value with these particular drivers, and so he wanted to uh, go stick stick with this particular driver. So uh, there you have it. Interesting results there on a on a vintage driver. Take care and have a great day.